Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. In today's episode of Memory Hacks, we'll be dealing with a very important chapter. So this chapter is very helpful if you want to remember shopping lists, speeches, etc. The chapter is the link method of memory, and this is our third chapter. This link method would help us in remembering a lot of stuff and it's very effective. In order to demonstrate its effectiveness, let's give you a test. So this is our test here. So in two minutes, read this list of 15 objects, which will be shown in the video. So you can pause the video in order to read out this and try to memorize it. Book, table, goat, shirt, tack, scissors, pear, handbag, curtain, frying pan, watch, phone, clock, mug, and bee. So, Pause the video and take two minutes to try to memorize the whole list in order. Okay, I hope you've memorized it. Now try to write that list without looking at the video on a sheet of paper. And you can give five points for each correct answer. Now remember that if you leave one of the words out of order, it will make the remaining words incorrect. So, for example, you started with book, table, goat, and you forgot shirt, and instead you wrote tack, the, the rest of the sequence will be incorrect because it's out of order. So, you have to remember everything in sequence here. How was the test? It was really hard, wasn't it? Without an untrained memory. Well, here we've put a stop to that. We'll put a stop to that using the link method of memory. It is especially useful in finding out and memorizing anything in a particular sequence. So it, so what it basically does is it uses illogical mental images to associate different things. It's proven in the brain that when you think of something illogical, it starts to get stuck in your brain more. So if you think of illogical phenomena, etc., often those phenomena come all back to your memory. And the link method is especially effective in these stages. You can recall daily schedules and errands using the link method. You can learn facts which are linked to each other. You can memorize speeches and articles by using the link method, but more on that later. And another very important thing which we usually do is we can remember shopping lists without writing them down by using the link method. So you write them down and you study each of them. You don't need to take that list over. You will know which is which. So that is the advantages of using the link method. And basically this is an illogical image. And so it's illogical images like these that help you to associate different things in the link method. Now, how exactly do you do it? Here are some steps. The first thing is to associate in a list, we have a list of items, then we associate the first item to the second, the second to the third, the third to the fourth, and so on until we reach the last item. So we start linking using mental images. And what are those mental images? Make your associations as ridiculous and illogical as possible. We'll be coming to that in a minute. And finally, you have to see these pictures in your mind's eye. Now, this only takes a few seconds when you're doing it in practice, but for an explanation, it might take a long time. So let's simplify this rules by looking back to our test. Remember that test that we had where we had to memorize book, table, goat, shirt, tack, scissors, pear, handbag, curtain, frying pan, watch, phone, clock, mug, and B. So you have to remember this list of 20 items. How do you start? The first thing that says is you have to remember the first object, which is book. Now, I suggest here that you um, remember any particular book that you like. For example, say someone likes Harry Potter, so you can visualize Harry Potter. You're reading Harry Potter, or you are writing something on your personal diaries, which many of you have. So that is the mental image on book. Now you need to associate book to table, and that should be as illogical as possible. It could be, for example, you can 
imagine yourself eating out of a large book instead of a table. Or you can actually see yourself reading a table and folding it like a book instead of a book. So you can imagine yourself reading a table, for instance. So these are all the kinds of you know illogical images that we use and we see them in our mind's eyes. So we just need to like see it for a few seconds and that's it. It'll be set in your memory. Now let's connect table to goat. So imagine your table is out on a field and it's grazing on grass and it has two horns on its side. So yes, that would especially connect table to goat. So that is another mental image. Now, most of these mental images are really hard to you know, write and draw, etc. So I'll give you a few examples later on in the list. So the important thing here is you need to visualize the images that you get, the first illogical image between the two you know, items that you get, and then you see that in your mind's eye and it will be registered there. So next thing that we need to do, connect goat to shirt. I found a cool image on this one, and this is a goat which is wearing a shirt and grazing on the field. Or you can imagine a goat eating a shirt or anything like that. So the important thing is you have to make it illogical. If you make it logical, then it's not going to work. Make your images as illogical as possible and see them in your mind's eye. For connecting shirt to tack, you can imagine something like this. You're wearing a shirt and you suddenly feel pain all over your body and you find out that the shirt is made out of tacks and they're hurting your body. And that is a really cool way and a very cool, cool image that you can do. Now, these are just samples. You can have other images that connect shirt and tack. So, the, so when you're practicing this for a long time, the first image, the first logical image that comes to your mind is usually the best to use. So I'm not writing these down, I already, I'm just looking at the two together and find out what am I using. So tack and scissors, how do you connect those? So an illogical image would be, well, using your scissors to pin something towards the whiteboard because that's what tacks are used for. So instead of a tack, you're using a scissor to you know pin something on the board. So that is another illogical image. And so scissors and pear, you can imagine trying to eat a pear but instead what you do is you're eating a scissor and then you find out that your mouth is fully blood is coming out and all that. So that is another illogical image. And then pear and handbag, you can visualize yourself carrying a large pear and going out shopping. So that is another illogical image. There can be any way you can use, you can actually visualize eating a handbag as well or any other illogical image. Now, handbag and curtain. So you can imagine yourself pulling your handbag aside and a ray of sunshine is coming. So essentially substituting, and that is another illogical image. And then you can use curtain and frying pan to create an illogical image. So that would be say, you know, you're frying eggs on your curtain and, and then the eggs fall off because the curtains are vertical. So that can be another illogical image. And then there's, frying pan and watch. So imagine yourself wearing a frying pan on your left hand and your left hand is starting to burn like hell. And that can be another, you know, these are illogical images that are coming into my mind. And I'm sure that after some work, you can actually do this. So it's pretty easy actually to make illogical images. And then you imagine, you know, of, if you wanna connect watch and phone, you can imagine bending your phone sideways and it breaks as you try to wear it across your wrist. So that is also a way in which you can um, create illogical images and then phone and clock. You can see your phone in the bathroom and it rings so very loudly and it starts bouncing off like a clock does. So that can be a connection, illogical. Try to make it as illogical as possible. You know, some people they try to, you know, see time in their phone, but that is already there. So try to make something as illogical as possible and then clock and mug. So you can, you can basically, uh, you know, use a clock and try to drink tea out of it like you use in a mug. So that can be an illogical image. And then for mug and bee, I found this cool image where 
a bee is drinking coffee out of a mug and the bee bloats up in size until it bursts. So that can be another illogical image. So after thinking about all these illogical images, your work is complete. Now, if your friend is asking you to read down this list, then you can tell them the entire list hands down, provided that you used illogical associations and you saw the association and the mental image in your mind's eye. If you do that, I'll guarantee you that you would have remembered everything in order. All the, this 20 item list will be in your memory in order for as long as you want. That is the beauty of the link system. It's very easy and it's very, very effective. It helps you to find, it, you know, list down anything and then, you know, remember it as fast as possible. If it's practice, it'll be like a sort of five minutes job and it'll be very, very easy to, you know, remember lists and speeches, etc. Now, over here, we've been stressing on illogical associations. However, for most people like us, we've been brought up to, you know, think logically about stuff. So illogical associations kind of, you know, sort of become hard to do. So in case if you cannot think illogically, then here are four ways in which you can make something illogical. So here's how we cook up illogical associations. The first thing is out of proportion. Second thing is action. Third is exaggeration. And fourth is substitution. So if you're talking about out of proportion, so you see here, um, the mouse is actually bigger than the cat. So this is a still from Tom and Jerry, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Mouse. And you see um, the cat is actually smaller than the mouse and the mouse tries to chase it. So this is something called out of proportion. You can actually you know, make your uh, you know, object very large or very small. So that is, some, that is what it's called out of proportion. And next thing is action. So when you think about action, you can, you know, um, put some violence in associated with that object, for example, frying pan. So try to put a frying pan on your watch and then the frying pan starts heating your hand so much that it burns and then the burn causes you injuries. So that is an example where action is put into an illogical association. Now, most of the times it's the more violent aspects of life that we think of, that we start remembering instead of the good times. So you don't need a trained memory to actually remember the last time you had an accident. And so using that mental calisthenic, we can use action and create a logical association. So that'll be super cool. And it will stick in your mind for a long time. The third is exaggeration. Now, suppose you want to connect between a telephone and cigarette. So you can, you know, you can just lift your telephone and start saying hello. And instead of an answer, you get a mouthful of millions of cigarettes coming out of the telephone. So that's called exaggeration. You're essentially, you know, numbering something in the millions, the billions, the trillions. So you're putting in a large number of something and that is called exaggeration. Remember the shirt and tack example where we saw that the tack was made, the shirt was made out of millions of tacks and it started hurting yourself. So that's an example of exaggeration. And finally, the most, the most common way people use is illogical associations is substitution. And th this is the same way. You remember you were, we were asked to connect between clock and mug and we were, when we used the clock and we used the function of the mug. So basically a mug is to drink tea. And we said that, imagine you drinking tea with a clock. So that is a classic example of substitution. So these are the four types of illogical associations and for, and for a short period of time, you might need to, you know, follow all of this, but then once you've started practicing the link system and it's down, hands down in your memory, then you don't need to even remember these. The first illogical association that comes to your mind will be the best to use and it will help you in a long way in order to remember appointments, schedules, like a daily schedule, like for example, you have to go to office, you have to go to uh, meet a friend, pick up an umbrella, et cetera, et cetera, in a whole day. But you can use the link system and you can remember this entirely. And you can also keep it for any length of time. So that's the beauty of the link system. So it's very cool and it's a very good way of getting a trained memory. This is one of the biggest aspects of getting a trained memory. So that's all folks about this episode of Brain Blitz Audios. 
So today's episode of Memory Hacks was pretty interesting. And today we gave you a very, very super cool trick by which you can remember a list of items. So for more of such videos, you can refer to our playlist Memory Hacks. I'll provide the link in the description down below. And if you want to check out more of our useful videos and content at Brain Blitz Audios, then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you can put the notifications button. You can hit it in the disc in the below part of this video. So below the video, you can see that bell button. So just click on it. So you'll get notifications about all of our latest and most useful, interesting educational content. So until the next episode of Memory Hacks, with another interesting way of remembering stuff. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.